All right, so let's cover the five steps of hypothesis testing for chi-square tests for independence. And here we see our usual five steps of hypothesis testing. So let's move through them. So steps one and two. So here is our research question, and we'll use the exact same example that we saw in part one. So are there differences between occupations on political party affiliation? So step one, what are we always positing? That there are no differences, right? So no differences between occupations on political party affiliation. Okay, so whenever we're writing out our null hypothesis equation, we know that our symbols always are in reference to whom? The sample or the population? The population. So that means we know that in the past, with our previous tests, we've always used some Greek notation, whether it be mu for population mean or rho for population correlation coefficient. But those were when we were working with parametric tests and we had means or if we had correlation coefficient. But in this case, we don't have either one of those two. So whenever we're writing out our null hypothesis equation for chi-score analysis, we're always talking about the proportion, the proportion of teachers is equal to the proportion of salespeople is equal to the proportion of farmers. And really, this is talking about the political party affiliation, where the political party affiliation is the dependent variable. So we're talking about that there's no difference between teachers and the political party affiliation and salespeople and their political party affiliation and the proportion of farmers that have different political party affiliations. So all we're using here are the different groups of our independent variable and stating that proportions of those groups are equal. So we're talking about step two. We know that we have three groups in this case. So think back on how we wrote out our research hypothesis when we were writing and working with ANOVA. When we're writing out step two for chi-score analysis, if we have three or more groups for our IV, as we do in this case with our occupations, we're writing out step two that at least one occupation is different from at least one other occupation on political party affiliation. Now, if we only had two occupations, let's say we we're comparing just teachers and salespeople, well, in that case, our step two, our research hypothesis is simply there is a difference between occupations, in this case, teachers and salespeople, on political party affiliation. So you have to think about, am I comparing two groups or am I comparing three or more groups when working with chi-square analysis? And depending upon how many groups you have within your IV, that's going to then tell you, do I write out simply there is a difference? Or do I need to write out at least one groups of your IV is different from at least one other group on your IV? So the last part for step two, the equation. The thing that's different about chi-square analysis is that there is no difference in notations when it comes to Greek and Roman. All we're positing now is simply that the groups are different from each other within step two, right? So our equation for our research hypothesis is simply the proportions of each of our groups under IV are not equal to each other. There is no different notation for population and sample when we're working with chi-square analysis. We're simply stating that the proportion of each of our groups are either equal to each other when we're stating the null, or they're not equal to each other when we're talking about the research alternative. So this is a very big different distinction when it comes to writing out the equations for our null and our research hypothesis 
when it comes to chi-square analysis. And this is different from what we've learned when we're talking about all of our other four tests. When it comes to correlation coefficient, we have rho for our population and r for our sample. And we have mu when we're talking about t-tests and ANOVA, where it's denoting the population mean. And then we have our actual mean, x-bar or m, to denote mean when we're talking about the sample. When we're talking about chi-square analysis, again, we're using capital P as the proportion in both our null equation and our research equation.